South Africa, I'll say this, a day is segmented in three. There's a morning, there's a lunch, and of course there's dinner. You are in the morning now. You are anxious. You want to do what other African states have done. But the scale of your nation is such that it will have an impact on food security in your nation. Accessing to land by all races is a noble issue. It must be pursued. Deployment of that land to better use to extraction of value is the challenge. How do you do it? Learn from others who have walked the road. We went through a difficult time. And we don't want you to sort of follow the script of Zimbabwe. There are some positive lessons. Equally, there are negative lessons. So avoid the negative lessons by cross-pollination. Governments speaking to each other. Your embassy must have, must arrange visits to see Zimbabwe. Where did you go wrong? Listen to us. Because we went wrong somewhere. We had to import food here. Learn from us. The most important thing for Southern African countries is to have stability over land, its use, its ownership, and the tenure, and so on. On top of which you can then build successful agricultural models. South Africans need to apply and use their common sense. Wherever everybody is seated, you simply ask yourself a very simple question. If I were the other side of the fence or the divide, would I accept that kind you know, of situation? And for me, the answer is very simple. Let's set aside all these legal issues, this law says, this law says that, and apply simple common sense. Laws are made to serve certain interest groups. It doesn't matter whichever way you look at it. It doesn't mean that laws are just across the board. No. They're supposed to preserve certain interests. And now you'll find yourself where by someone is saying, I'm holding on a title deed. By that title deed, you got it on a land that was grabbed and where a certain law was used to, to disenfranchise and take it from somebody. And now you want to write on that title deed, which in my view, maybe you got it illegally as well. But you had a law that was in place and so forth. It won't work. South Africans need to be very, very honest to themselves. You guys have got people who have been in South Africa for the last three, four hundred years, so you can't go nowhere. You know, and what I see is people trying to defend, you know, these tapes as if you are preserving a legacy for the future generations. You are not. You are destroying the legacy for the future generations of South Africa. South Africa is a very good example of the Clark and Mandela climbing down against the hard cause in their both respective parties to a compromise for the future of their country. I think South Africa is, it, the signs are on the table exactly what was happening in Zimbabwe and that they really, they need to start talking about it and trying to, yeah, amicably sort it out because it's going to happen and we don't want it to happen like it happened here because it, it's caused 20 years of disaster in the farming. What we believe could have worked in Zim is where the white farmers could literally have looked at the land that they need to be productive. You've got 10,000 hectares, and depending on the region, like for instance, in this region, if you've got 10,000 hectares, then you could have a nice, uh, successful cattle ranging exercise. But you have somebody who's 20,000 hectares. And the question is, why don't you parcel out that extra 10,000 hectares, hectares and it over to government or whatever institution has been designated as the one that can then identify you know, people that can go into those areas. If you go to other parts of the country, you find that if you, like region one, where you can be very productive on 500 hectares, but you've got somebody sitting on 3,000 hectares and with 2,000 hectares idle and find ways of parceling it out to the guys who need land. And in the process, why they then, they come up with programs where you then train, you know, the black farmers, such that when they get the land, then they can be able to use it productively. There's a lot of merit in doing it district by district. You see, every district in the country, like South Africa, I mean, you'll find Limpopo province around all days, Dendron, Viva, will be very different to how it is, say, in the Eastern Cape, or how it is in the, you know, in the Otanequa Mountains or whatever. 
you can't have a one-fit-all solution. It, it's too diverse. And I know that in Zimbabwe, for example, at the time of our land reform, there were hundreds of farmers that would have been quite happy to get out of farming if, if, if it had been approached on that basis. Farmers would say, yeah, I'm, I'm out of it. I'm, you know, I'm elderly, I've lived my life, I've made my profit, I've enjoyed it, I've got no children that want to carry on farming anyway. Yeah, look, sure, you know, if you want me to move, I'll move. Believe you me, if you do that, I think South Africa is enough for everybody. It would be sad, you know, to see South Africa allow itself to go into the situation that we have gone through ourselves. Learn. You know, you don't need to put your hand in the fire to get bent for you to know that fire burns. But extensive rural land, is what government's taken, um, taken ownership of. And, you know, it's not all bad. I mean, in Zambia, you know, you also can't own land, but you can own a lease, which in effect is sort of like a title deed, but actually it isn't one. But really, it's a right. And as long as one has a right to operate on a piece of land and be defended and secured to do so, there's no reason why farming should be any different from whether it's done on a title deed basis or not. What is important, obviously, to financial institutions is there has to be asset value in the superstructure, because otherwise the financial institutions will say, well, against what are we advancing alone? You know, we, we can't advance alone against theory. So there has to be a tangible asset, really, to advance funds against. Now, a lease, a lease solves that problem. Guys, you've got to uh, speak to your ministers, find out um, what their thoughts are and, and the way forward so that uh, a system can be put in place where a land that isn't being fully utilised uh, can be claimed, or if there's a certain scheme uh, for a certain area, farmers can then negotiate a way where they can move somewhere else if a scheme's going to be uh, put in for uh, the new black farmers. Learn from what's happened elsewhere, because everywhere had a similar problem to get through somehow. The problem is when people cling to things too much and, and they, they don't think really the long term. Talk to each other. The same way Mandela and the Clark, those examples that those guys did must never be underestimated that created the formula to take South Africa forward. So I think that's really the way you need to look at it. Any other way, disaster. And if South African agriculture doesn't work, then the whole region will be affected. We don't have enough capacity. You can combine Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Zambia, Angola, Botswana. We don't have enough capacity to replace what the South Africans are doing right now. No. So that situation can be allowed you know, to get out of hand. I think it would be very responsible for the leadership of all the interest groups in that country to allow that thing to deteriorate. Mark my words, it will be very, very irresponsible and unnecessary. The way I believe to do it is for both parties, being the farmers as well as the government, to sit around the table and find, find an answer which, which will involve sharing. It's, it's got to be shared. Some of it's got to be redistributed. We really hope that the South Africans can sort their situation out so that they can carry on because Zimbabwe does look up to South Africans and we want to, we want to work together. We want them to be able to show us how good agriculture is done so that we do it right here going forward in the next few years. And by the way, if the farmers in South Africa, the business people in South Africa allow this thing to be handled politically, Politicians never come up with the solutions in the best interest of the ordinary person. Learn from us. And that I can say to anybody. They will look at certain political experiences and they look at this campaign time, let's do this and so forth. Who suffers? It's us, the ordinary people. South Africaners zal zonder twijfel anders en slimmer denk oor dinge soos grondbesit. Die regering en landbouwers kan gerust by Zimbabwe gaan kaars opsteek oor wat daar verkeerd geloop het en hoe om dit in Zuid-Afrika te probeer vermaai. Grond is die sensitieve kwestie van allemaal betrokken en dit moet bijgelee word. Oor twee weke besoek ons Zambia om na hulle model te kyk. 
Ons hou daarvan om van jou te hoor op Facebook en Twitter of stuur vir ons e-post na prontuit by actueel.tv. Tot volgende week, mooi blij.